Christian Chudo here, academyofphotography.com. Today, today I would like to talk about composition. In this tutorial we are going to explore the basic concepts that will guide the emerging photographer to understand the definition and applicability of the elements in a photograph. I am sure a lot of you already know the rule of thirds in photography, but life is not only about that. There are other tools to use for better photography and I would like to go a bit deeper than that. We need to understand first what we see, so we can become creators. Why is it important to understand composition? Knowing how to use, combine and compose various elements in an image should enable you to, se to be able to send a message, create a picture that tells a story with substance, create a, create a sense of beauty and send a feeling and make people react when they see your photograph. We are going to touch the definition, principles and tips how to use the composition elements to create better photos. We are going to explore various examples and make comments so you should be able to feel in control of your camera and you should be able to control the message you want to send to other people. Before we go into the detail in relation to composition, we need to understand what makes us humans vibrate and what do we like to see. First of all, our sub subconscious in our brains tell us what to like, tell us to like what we know and what is familiar. Knowing and understanding what we see tells our brains to relax, be comfortable and have a sense of pleasure. On the other hand, the unknown creates fear, danger, hazard and that leads to mental discomfort, tension and dislike. At the end of the day, this is just a chemistry in the brain producing various substances creating the very various feelings in relation to the information we receive from outside. Very important to remember, familiar, known equals mental comfort, feeling that we like something, pleasure and attractiveness. Unf unfamiliar, it's unknown, creates mental discomfort, fear and we do not like that. I would like to touch base on definition of the beauty. What is beauty? Beauty is, an, is a uh, visual aesthetic notion of something that we consider beautiful and we like it by looking at it. Beauty comes from familiarity. It's something that we already know. It's something that we already we have, we have seen before. Let's explore beauty by the most common example, the human face. Analyzing any face we consider beautiful, we can assess the following. How long and how wide is the face? The ratio between forehead, nose and mouth eyes, eyebrows, in relation to other elements, upper lips, chin. Try to answer the following questions. Would the color of the skin impact on the beauty? Would the color of the eyes change the beauty? Would the smoothness of the skin change a beautiful face? Beauty is ratio. It is the ratio between left and right, up and down, long and short, high and low, wide and narrow. Beauty is based on the principle of familiarity, of something that we know and we recognize. Beauty is coming from combining all elements of the face into one image that leads us to the following important definition and the subject of the current topic. Composition is the organization of several elements together into an arrangement based on a rule. The rule of composition must be easily identifiable without any confusion. If we are looking at a picture where all the elements are randomly thrown and we cannot see a rule, that is not a composition, it is just anarchy. We won't like it as it does not say anything. By arranging several elements in a picture in any shape or form creates a composition which is identifiable, which has a rule that is identifiable. We see the rule of how the objects are placed. The rule does not have to be specific, but it needs to be a rule of some sort. The simple rules of composition are the most effective and they are responsible to create familiar shapes and sometimes we can, we can call them beautiful. Let's explore the most common rules of composition and beauty in the same time. Number one, symmetry. Symmetry is the most common composition rules one of the, of the important beauty components and significantly underappreciated in today's photography. It is defined by an axis, visible or not, vertical or horizontal. Symmetry 
means centrality, order, power and authority. It means, it means direction, importance and influence. Left is equal to the right and the central line is the direction leading visually to the most important element in the picture. Just few examples. Churches, public institutions, government buildings, castles are based on symmetry and they show power and importance. The symmetry is not only defined by a vertical axis, but also horizontal. The horizon is the best example of symmetry axis and if used in the middle of an image, it becomes the subject. Since we are talking about the horizon, we can change the subject of an image by simply changing the location of the horizon. Moving the horizon down, we can say the image is about the sky. Moving the horizon up in the picture, we can say the photo is about the ground. Very simple, but very effective. A second uh, rule of composition we can call rhythm and repetition. It's hopefully self-explanatory. Repetition is having one element duplicate itself many times in the same position with a specific step. Repetition is a basic composition rule and it is liked by our brains as we know what is coming. It is foreseeable, we can predict. Even if we do not see all the steps, we have the comfort of prediction and that is why repetition are a good tool to create a nice and beautiful image. Repetition does not necessarily to be in a line, linear. It could be two-dimensional or three-dimensional. Same, uh, same element repeated in space. As a photographer, you must always look for the fences, poles, anything that suggests equal steps. And this is an easy way to take good photos, interesting to look at. Repetitions are attractive, hence beautiful. And if you use correctly, the eye of the viewer are directed where they need to be directed. Rhythm is the repetition of similar elements of, or groups of elements. This is still a repetition, but introduces an element of complexity in the composition. We know a similar element is coming, but, uh, and uh, we know it is slightly different. These composition techniques are also great to create a sense of perspective, to draw our eyes to a specific point in the image. Repetition and rhythm are also a music characteristics, which in a way is a very similar to all visual arts, all visual arts, and is based on the same principles. Musical rhythms cr uh, create a feeling of pleasure and comfort due to the fact our brains expect and uh, they will receive the, follow the, uh, the same notes in uh, equal steps as predicted. That is why we love music for the pleasure and the comfort uh, and the pred predictability and for, for the rhythm. If there is no rhythm, there is no good music and it is amazing how some people fail to ignore this very simple rule in music. Number three, golden ratio or the rule of thirds. Probably most of the photographers already know the rule of thirds where you would split an image horizontally or vertically in three sections and place the point of the interest in either uh, one intersection point or on the line defining the thirds. Some cameras come already with the guidelines on the LCD screens to help people compose their frame, uh, to help people compose their frames as per the rule of thirds. Not everyone knows, in fact, the rule of thirds is a simplification of the golden ratio or Fibonacci's number. Just in few words, humans have attempted to measure beauty by start uh, from ancient times. Mathematicians, artists and philosophers have tried to define beauty, what is a beautiful face, what is a beautiful human being, and they come, came up with this formula uh, by observation. We're not going to go into the history of it, this is not, this is not subject of our, or our tutorial. In just in an attempt to measure the beauty, it has been discovered and measured that the formula uh, applies to the human body, a formula applies to the human body in many ways. It is not only a uh, human body, but also it is found in nature, animals and flowers. We are surrounded by this magic ratio, which is called the golden ratio, and it is our, bra uh, and our brains will receive this message over and over again in different shapes and forms. And every time we see it, 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 it shows as familiar, it's common, that's why it creates pleasure. And in regards to the human face, you would be surprised to discover that all faces we see as beautiful have this ratio between various elements as described. Rule of thirds is just a simplified golden ratio formula for the ease of understanding from everyone as the exact number is 
It is, e it is easier to tell someone to split an image in three equal visual parts rather than draw a line to the ratio mathematically described through this number, 1.6, it doesn't make any sense. It's easier to say, just split it in three and you're good to go. One thing to remember, golden ratio is the measure of, of beauty and it is simplified by the rule of thirds. Application of the rule of thirds are infinite and it comes to a great surprise to me how artists, painters, photographers, graphic artists, architects, they fail to use it to ensure beauty in their works of art. Either they don't know it or choose to ignore it in order to create tension on purpose. But that comes, to, to the, uh, that comes with the risk of being rejected by the viewer. The golden ratio describes the most beautiful relation between the long and the short, the wide and the narrow, the more and the less. It can be applied through clear lines or suggestions, color differences, intensity or time as a different dimension. All the principles of the golden ratio apply to music, to food, to anything that is a composition, anything that has, has a few elements combined. Beauty is specific to us as, uh, as humans and apply, to, uh, and apply to our culture and species and we have, uh, as we have the same natural proportions. If humans would be different, the rule would probably change. We cannot consider beautiful another body that does not follow the same rules and it would be different. Let's explore composition characteristics. First of all, we need for any composition, as already mentioned, we need to have a rule, the rule. Going back to the definition of the composition, several elements combined based on one easily recognizable rule is a composition. Vertical family composition, as an example, in the image you just see, it is very obvious that faces of the family members are creating a vertical line and also symmetrical. Uh, it is a rule, so it is a composition. If the faces will become horizontal, the composition will follow another rule. Just a side mention, having large groups in line, just like groceries on a shelf, is not the best choice for a family photo, but it's still a composition by definition. There are good compositions and bad composition. I'm always avoiding uh, putting people in one line. Anyway, moving forward, family composition in a circle. In the image you just see, the group is composed based on a circle. Nothing to do with symmetry, uh, the rule of thirds, or, but still a valid composition. The rule, obviously, is a circle and we do not have any difficulty in seeing and recognize it as a rule. Let's talk about, uh, since we are touching base families, we can talk about various levels, uh, family composition uh, techniques. The best group composition is when we have faces on different levels and we can start reading and looking at them from left to right, top and bottom. This is also a classic family tip to have various faces at different levels, at different heights in the image uh, to enable a logic order to be seen, looked at and analyzed. Another rule of composition is a zigzag. In the image you just see, it is easy to recognize the zigzag shape of the streets that uh, in itself create a rule of visual composition leading us to follow the path. Diagonals. You can use diagonals as very effective tools to draw our eyes from one point to another and sometimes towards the subject of the image. They can be used for a sense of perspective and depth, always create tension of the movement and create a sense of direction. Another characteristic of composition is balance. The sense of balance in an image is just like anything else. The common sense will dictate if the general feeling will be one of, of still or peace and equ equilibrium or balance or tension of objects about to fall over. The balance is important to create a sense of peace for the viewer. That is not to say that tension is a bad thing. Maybe that is exactly the intent of the photographer. We can create with the uh, purposefully uh, images that create discomfort just to prove a point. When things do not look right and they are about to fall over, the viewer will feel a tension. Depending on your intent as a photographer, you can use balance to either calm the viewer or stir him up. I'll just give you an example. You can see in the picture right now the lack of balance. Since the position is not natural, it creates an intriguing, intriguing sense of movement and tension. Again, there is no recipe how a composition needs to be balanced or not. It is the intent of the artist to convey a message. 
I'm just showing you uh, another visual uh, balance technique the baby with the candles in the image you just see right now the candles are added specifically to balance the composition as the baby would be the uh, the baby in the image would be we weigh a lot more and the right the left hand side will be empty so that's why we need to add another compositional element to create a sense of balance uh, I'm just going to talk about the image you just see right now with rocks on top of each other in a diagonal. The image, will take, the image you just see takes two compositional tools, the balance and diagonal, to turn them to a very tension image. I'm asking myself, how are those rocks not falling over? It is important to think about balance in your composition as it is a strong tool to send your intended message. We can talk about lines, diagonals and perspectives as uh, compositional visual compositional techniques. Lines are a powerful visual aid to direct the eyes from a point to another. Lines can be used in so many forms, shapes to express length, depth and volume. Lines draw the, draw the eyes of the viewer to a point of convergence and that is an easy tool to use to highlight an element to create the sense of perspective and to create interest. Always use diagonal lines in a picture to create dynamic images, suggest movement, depth and perspective. In the image you just see right now, the uh, lines on the ceiling uh, create, uh, are creating a sense of depth and it can suggest that the room is deeper than in reality. Lines can be used as a texture or they can be used to create volume. As a photographer I always love to use the depth of field next to a fence to, accept, to accentuate the depth even stronger for a more powerful and interesting result. Another characteristic of, of a composition is the dominance and the subject hierarchy. I believe that any composition should have a dominant presence. That needs to be very clear. Just like in food, food is a composition as well of ingredients, when every dish has a dominant taste, any visual composition should combine elements in harmony to outline the main subject of the, of the composition. So we need to have a dominant subject. Most of the images will employ a uh, common sense and the subject is clearly shown. However, I just wanted to say sometimes, it is difficult to understand the intention of the photographer and that does not help anyone. I'm just showing you an example in an image that is very confused and it's not very clear to me what it's all about. Is this about the towel hanging over the balcony? It is about the building, it is about the bicycle. The intention is not very clear and the composition is very confusing. If there's an intention to show something, this is very really poorly done. This is an example how, in my opinion, you should not do a composition or you should not frame a picture. I'm just showing you in this image you see right now, there's no doubt uh, that the subject is the church and the fence is used to draw our eyes to the subject. This is a well-defined composition with a clear intention shown and no confusion of what we see. It is very clear what this um, image is all, it's all about. It is also a good example as the church dominates the image as the composition dominant without being out of scale allowing the other elements to complement it. I would like to talk about some difficult compositions and what we can do about it. Duality. We have a duality situation when we have a symmetry of two different elements but we are not sure which one is more important and that creates confusion. I would like to, I would avoid this situation. One thing we can do is to create a depth by placing one element closer to the camera and creating a hierarchy. A difficult composition is, is, uh, is a one element composition. Uh, if we want to, have to photograph only one little or well, only one subject, how can we make that into a composition? It, this is a tricky one. How to create a composition with only one element? There are few things to make it interesting, but using simplicity of the symmetry or the rule of thirds in relation to the image frame edges will do, will actually help you to create a better picture. In conclusion, good compositions are always the simple ones either following one rule or more, more than one. As a photographer, keep in mind and think what, we, what you want to tell your viewer and how to say it to make it very clear. That will bring value to your images and make your works easy to read. One of the best examples I can give today, I'll just throw you a, just a simple, a simple technique. I like this image that combines several compositional elements. The wedding couple next to a fence using the rule of thirds to place the subject 
uh, using also depth of field to accentuate the subject and using perspective lines to draw our eyes to the subject. This is a very simple combination of several elements with a powerful impact. I think uh, this is enough for today. Please take, take a bit of time to absorb this information and take one step at a time. If you would like to submit an image for comments, please send us an email and we will upload it for public to see and to place comments on our uh, Academy of Photography website. Hoping that I casted a bit of light on the composition uh, matter, I would like to thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. Any feedback is welcome. And until I see you next time, I wish you happy shooting. Thank you.